Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. In this episode, we're going to look at the Elegoo Mars Pro resin 3D printer. This is not a sponsored video. I, this is all my own. And um, I've already pulled it out of the box because I don't want to bore you with the, uh, here's a bunch of foam. Here it is wrapped up in a box. Uh, it was very well packed, I have to say. There is no damage to it. And so let's uh, get to the box itself the Elgu Mars Pro, and here we go. So here it is, uh, it's all assembled. Now, one thing I found is this little rubber booty that I've seen on a lot of other people's reviews seem to cause problems. This seems to be fitting very, very well on mine. So I don't know if I'm just lucky or whether it was uh, subject to a slight design change. So let's just go here. So these are all the parts. We've got a couple of face masks. These are your standard um, nurse type masks that everybody's wearing these days. Um, spare nuts and, uh, sorry, spare screws, machine screws. Um, filters for the resin if you've got to pour it back into the container. Um, nippers for taking away support material. A couple of Allen wrenches for adjusting the build plate, etc. And if you need to replace the FEP, little support for the build plate so when you take it off after you printed a model um, what you can do is you put this on the carrier and it allows you to drip dry basically the model and the tray so it holds it at an angle so it can drip back in the resin reservoir on the on the machine and then you can go and clean it with isopropyl alcohol or water depending on what kind of resin you've got uh, we have a plastic scraper which i would recommend for the bed and for cleaning up when you've got to scrape things off. Um, it also came with a metal scraper. Uh, I'm sure that there's going to be occasions where that may be necessary to remove it from the build plate. Um, I would not recommend using the metal scraper if you've got things stuck to the FEP film on the bottom because it would very easily um, cut through it. We have a little measuring beaker and we got three pairs of nitrile gloves, I think they're nitrile gloves. Anyway, three pairs of uh, gloves to protect your hands and things. And of course, we've got the build plate. Uh, outside of that, of course, the printer with its power supply. So without further ado, let's see how easy it is to do this. Okay, like I said, I've never done anything with this. According to the instruction manual, um, you need to use an A4 sheet of paper to calibrate the Z height zero adjust. Now I don't have any A4 paper. I have letter paper, which is slightly smaller, but it's probably not any thinner. Um, difference between you know European and North America, I guess. So I will just grab a sheet of that and we will get to powering this on for the first time and we will zero out the build plate. So let's take the lid off the printer and we will set this up. Now, it's going to get noisy now, of course, when the fan cut kicks in, probably. Uh, Mars Pro, there's your standard screen with just your three icons, tool, system, and print. So, from what I understand, we have to remove the resin tray. I have already removed all the plastic film and things from this stuff. put the build plate. This is the aluminum finished. Looks like they put it in a lathe and turned it. Um, so we need to slacken these two Allen bolts so that this is a bit loose. So let me just grab those. It came with the kit. Now once they're loose there is a bit of spring pressure on here which is good because you want that. You got to set this up properly. Um, notch in here, just go straight onto the mounting lever. Screw it down tight. Okay, so it's time to zero out the plate. So we put this in. Um, we go from the main menu, we select tools, and we select manual. I accidentally pressed set zero before, so it's no longer set correctly. Go manual, we bring the plate down close. Just hit home instead, it was already.
Okay, now that we've set zero, we need to adjust, and sorry, we need to tighten up the bolts. So let's just make sure we're aligned with the build plate. And then we'll tighten these up. Try not to put too much pressure on them so we don't make it go up or down and adjust things. Good. That's still got the friction there. So we'll pull that out now and we'll go to the next step. Okay, now we need to raise up the build platform so we can get the resin reservoir back in place. So let's go into manual and we'll say 10 millimeters and we'll bring it up a bunch of times. I said 10 there I think roughly so it should come up plenty enough. The build quality of this looks very very nice. There are no dents, no dings, no scratches in it. Everything is pretty solid so it managed to get shipped very very well and arrived to me well enough. I've actually had it sitting for over a month waiting to do this so um, <laughs> too late to send it back or have a complaint about it but anyway. So let's take the resin. I got a little bit of dust in there so I just need to wipe that out. I've got a lens cloth here. I'll just blow it and it picked up some just static dust in the air. Never touched it with my fingers or anything. So let's just slide that back in. It does drop into a little notch. Right there. And tighten that down. Okay. That's all done. So what's next? Next thing it asks for is to verify that the UV light is working correctly. So you go into exposure, which is tools, exposure, and just leaving it alone, you click next. And from what I understand, it'll turn on the UV light with this pattern on it. And I'm looking down on that, and yes, it's all there nicely, so that's good. So we'll go back, and that's gone off, good. Now after that, what's next after that? I think that's everything. Uh, I guess next thing is to use the USB key. Yes, I'm in two corners of the screen at the same time. Um, because it comes with a test print. Not going to do anything fancy yet. I'm just going to try out the test print. Let's just pop that in there for the moment. Got to get some resin. So when I got the printer, I got a um, couple of containers of resin. I've got some skin colored standard photopolymer resin, 405 nanometer. I've got some gray and I've got some clear. Now you do need to wear gloves when you're handling this. It is slightly toxic. So not recommended to have too much exposure to yourself or anything. The software that comes with this, which actually comes on the USB key, is called Cheeto Box. C-H-I-T-U Box. Um, this version, there was an immediate update, which I went onto the site to check, and we'll have a look at the software later, but uh, it needed an immediate update to the latest version, and you have to sign in to do that. You just create a simple account, and you just sign in. You can download it, and it just installs, and you're done. Okay, so on the USB key, there is a model rook for test printing. It's already been sliced and everything else, so theoretically it should work right away. Um, in, it's in a subfolder called Elegu Mars Rook Model 4 Printing. So we go into there, and there it is on the bottom left corner. I don't know if you can. So there's the model we want. It's already sliced and everything else, so we're going to click on that. Looks like we may get two rooks. Won't make any difference to the speed of printing. Now, we're not ready to print yet because we haven't loaded any resin into the printer. So, the book here that I'm looking at, 
Yep. Does not uh, tell me a lot about first print. Iso uh, it recommends better than 95% isopropyl alcohol or whatever for cleaning your models and the tank and things. You do need probably some, you know, roll of wipes, uh, kitchen towel because it could get messy. Um, I would also recommend having some kind of container. Um, let me zoom back out again a second. So what I've got here is a container I picked up at the local uh, store. It's got a little insert with holes in so that you can pull your model out easily without anything else and you can put your isopropyl alcohol in here. Screw the lid down tight and then you can give it a bit of a shake about when you're cleaning your model after it's printed. Um, so what else would you need? You've got your masks, etc, etc. Now avoid direct contact with skin, uh, select model file rook and start printing. Uh, that's not going to work because we haven't put any resin in there and that's all it says. So let's put some resin in. It says don't fill it to more than a third full. We're going to do this with a flesh colored resin I think. Let's just remove this while we fill it. As long as you've tightened up the hex bolts it should remain zeroed. So that's good. Let's put on a glove. This is a one liter bottle. You can get smaller bottles. Very interesting color here. Okay, that should be way more than enough. Let's put the build platform back on. And we should now be able to say start. Even with the gloves on. And we'll see how well that does. It is a probably over a one hour print, so I will speed it up once it's going. Excuse my head, I'm just checking a few things here. So that was an extended exposure for the first layer. Alright, I'm going to let this run for a little while and I'll come back to it once it's got something to show. Do need to have the lid on to prevent uh, other light from affecting the resin so that's why I've just put that back on there and also probably keeps the odor down from the resin as well it's not unpleasant but I can smell it so there is a charcoal filter in the back of the printer to help reduce any odor okay so I just stopped the or paused the print for a moment because I wanted to see whether it was working uh, and adhering to the bed and it isn't. If I just lift the build plate off a second I guess I need a bit of tissue just in case it trips. I can lift this off and show you. You see there's nothing on there. So that means it's probably not releasing from the FEP at the bottom. And if I take my little scoogey, I can actually feel them on the bottom. One, two, there's yeah, two distinct circles there. Better just stuck to the bottom. So I'm going to have to empty this resin out, 
clean everything up and probably do the calibration again. So, I'll be right back. By the way, that seems to be a common occurrence from what I've seen for a lot of people. Um, having to run through that more than once and also sometimes this build plate not um, adhering right away. And yes, I did remove the plastic film off of it, the protective film. So, I've drained the tank out a little bit. I just wanted to show you these are the two bases of the rook and they actually didn't stick to the bottom. Uh, they are getting quite thick because there's been a few layers done already. But they are actually quite free to come off. So it probably is the Z adjustment is not quite right. So I will redo that. Check it again. If there's anything different to what I first showed you, I will record it and show you again. But I'm just going to remove these and I guess redo the calibration and move on. Okay, so once the bed is homed, what you do is you just hold the Make sure the platen is inside the build area. Hold it in place so it stays flat and tighten up the allen bolts. We'll adjust the zero. This is just making sure it's flat to the plate. So we'll just tighten those up. Obviously you don't want to go too tight, you don't want to break anything. Now we want to raise it up until we can just move the paper. And not 10 millimeters. So we'll pick 0.1 millimeter. And that's all I did was one. And it's pretty tight there. Probably too tight, so we'll just go up one notch. And now we're good. So we're doing that again. So we back out on the menu and we say set zero, confirm. And that is now the zero. Okay, let's just start it again. It's doing the initial cure on the first layer. Um, the main difference with calibrating this time is that I uh, lowered it to its home position, screwed up tight the Allen screws, then raised it by, it was just 0.1 millimeter just to make it so the paper could actually be pulled out without tearing it or anything. Um, so it did have some friction there, a bit more than what there was before. And then I set the zero. Uh, when I redid the home again, it seemed to go a tad further um, so it's still gripping it, but I still uh, tighter than when I was actually doing the first zero But I was still able to slide the paper out reasonably easily. So we'll see if this works I'll give it a few minutes and then we'll hopefully have a look should be able to see it adhering to the build plate Okay, it's been going for a bit now. It's up to 12 minutes it's actually a three-hour print and I'm just looking Underneath the build plate, I just press pause on the screen and we actually do have a. Let's take a picture for you. We actually do have a model. I'll put that up on the screen so you can see. So we'll just press continue, put the cover back on, and I guess now we just wait for ages. And there we go. So, just let that chug along. Okay, so this is the next day. Um, what I did was I adjusted the first few layers exposure time from 45 seconds to 70 seconds and the rest of the layer times to 7 seconds. That's what was recommended actually on the side of the bottle versus the default for the model that was there. Um, I had to recompile the model and print it and as you can see whilst it's rather on the tiny side I'll put it up on this one instead there we go printed nicely. So what I did was I 
put in a, another model that came on the SD card. I ran it through the cheetah box slicer. Um, I think this one was a Barbarian or something like that, one of the models anyway. Um, using the same settings and I put support material in and things and that's what's sitting in here right now. So, it's just finished printing, let's have a look. It would just say OK to confirm completion. I'll just adjust the camera up a little bit so we can see. As you can see there, I've got the covers on. Lift this off. And there's the model sitting there nicely. It's still got resin in it. I have a container of isopropyl alcohol ready to use. So we need to chip that off into there. I guess gloves are in order. So we'll put some gloves on. Now there is this little bracket which you can use for drip try drip drip drying partially the model. Let's just go up a little bit, zoom out just a touch. There we go. Then we can see it all. Right, so just take this off. Okay. Put it onto this little bracket and sit it on there. And what will happen is the resin will run a little bit and just drop off the end if there's any left. It doesn't look like there's much there. I'll take a picture of the model sitting on the plate from here. I'll post it up. Actually it looks like most of the resin has already dripped off of there because the last part of the model it has been sitting up in the air out of the resin bath so it's all basically dripped off. This has got the isopropyl alcohol in it. Now this does have support material on it, just a couple of millimeters worth, but you can see here it's quite a lot of support material, or it looks like right now. So we'll try and get that to come off of the bed. There we go, just got it under a corner. And there we go, that came off quite easy. Now grab a piece of kitchen towel splashing on the bench. So up and down. It's got holes in the bottom of this inner sleeve so it's squirting the alcohol, isopropyl alcohol 99% all through the model. Now the only thing to do after this would be some time in either some sunlight or under a UV light. I'll trim that off using the provided little side cutters and then here in the light, and we'll have a closer look. There we go. Yes, it's flesh colored, I know. Gray would have been better, but I have lots of flesh colored material uh, resin. So, uh, you can see it cracks off quite nice and easily, which it should, because it's only held on by a little point of resin. Okay, I'm not going to make you sit there and watch me cut every piece of support material off of this. Just basically go around, use the flat, sharper edge of the cutters um, against the model edge, and just basically carefully trim them all off, and it should come away nice and easily. So, I'll come back to you once I've done that. So, in some of the areas, you can actually just gently you break the support lower down.
then you can snap it off the model if it doesn't already come off on its own. You just end up with tiny little, and you see a lot of that's just coming off on its own because it's held on by a very small piece. Yeah, perfect. So I guess one thing you've got to be careful of when you're doing these models is leave enough height. I set two millimeters, and it's barely enough to get the cutters in there. And there we go. Nicely, nice little model. All nicely resin printed, ready for curing. And painting, of course. So, all right. So how difficult was it to get the Elegoo Mars up and running and printing? Well, the default settings were not ideal. It was being a little over optimistic on the curing time for the resin I had. Um, I think they call this resin beige on the website, but it's actually called flesh on the bottle. Um, so from the 45 seconds, I upped the initial exposure levels to 70 seconds. Probably a little bit less may still work. I have to play around with that a little bit, and that's all part of the fun. And I ex increased the layer outside of the first few layer exposure times from 6 seconds to 7 seconds. That's all I did there. And as you can see now, it pr printed the Rook no problem, and it printed this Barbarian no problem at all. So, um, odors are not too much. I'm using this in my basement. I do have the cover on when I'm printing. Um, so it is any air. I mean, basically it's a sealed chamber. So the carbon filter, it's got a fan sucking it through it. Um, there's no really much room for air to go through anyway. But any that does will go through the carbon filter. And so the odors were very low in here. Um, didn't really notice it wasn't an issue for me to be working in the area while it was going on. So very happy with that. Um, oh, I did reprint a Rook. I printed really, really nicely. So you've got a helical, very fine helical inside. You've got the stairs going up the model. A little hole there going through. Some quite nice details. And printed just fine. Uh, stuck to the build plate. Didn't take much of a little tap to just get it off. And uh, a little clean up, haven't cured these yet. And that worked well too. So yeah, the only thing was basically adjusting the settings for the printing for this resin. Now I noticed looking through the on the website, there's a whole bunch of PDFs and various other things for settings for the Elegoo Mars resin. And uh, for this printer, most of them were uh, between 60 and 70 seconds for the initial layer curing, which probably would be okay. I mean, mine was set to 45 by default for the model that was on the USB key. Now, that model could have been sliced for a different one of the Elegoo Mars resin printers. It doesn't necessarily have to have come from something that was specifically done for this model of printer. So once I ran it through the cheetah box and set the parameters correctly according to the manufacturer's instructions, as opposed to the default thing on the SD uh, USB stick, it printed just fine. Now I did scale it back down a little bit because it was um, basically a three hour print and I wanted to make sure it was working. So I put it back to 100% scale and it printed just fine. So happy with that. Uh, the support materials I used set on cheetah box with just the default I just said all um, didn't change any of the parameters I know that you can fine-tune support material um, manually if you want and there's plenty of videos on how to do that now once I played a little bit with this printer I will uh, probably do another video showing you how to do some of that as well but for now um, for the price this Alagoo Mars Pro works very very well and um, is actually relatively easy to use um, obviously, you need, you know, clean up materials and stuff like that. So, you know, some of the essentials, kitchen roll, because there's lots of soaking stuff up. Um, isopropyl alcohol, probably buying a gallon in a big container would be a more economical way of doing it. 
apparently you can use green clean or something like that i've heard people say i haven't seen that in the stores here in canada yet um, but i haven't looked very hard i've also got another container here just to put my um, resin soaked bits of paper towel and isopropyl soaked towels in for temporary storage until i dispose of them properly i haven't pulled the resin back into a container yet when you do you should pour it through a filter just in case there are any uh, hardened bits of resin floating in it. You don't want to introduce that into your next model, so use one of these to pour it back. Um, I'm going to play around with printing a few more models before I do that, so I won't show that on camera. Also, they recommend you pour it into the beaker from the tank through the filter and then pour it into the bottle afterwards. So just a tip there. Never use the metal spatula on the build sorry, the uh, tank, that FEP film is only 0.1 something millimeters thick. And this is sharp and rough and it probably will rip a hole right through it as soon as it looks at it. Only ever used a little plastic scraper on that. When you're removing something off the build plate, you can use this, it's an aluminum build plate. Uh, and I've seen on some other people's videos that it has gotten scratched up a bit from use over time with trying to remove models. Um, I think if you do have the support material there like this, I was able to get it to, this is just um, on a pad, um, like a raft, I guess, the same as FDM printing. I printed a little raft and I was able to get the spatula, because it's got a sharpened edge, under one corner of the raft and just lift it slightly. And after that, it was very easy just to slide it under, lift the entire model off of the build plate. So that's another tip as well. Anyway, that's it. I'm not going to tie you up any more with this. Um, I will put the specifications up. It is a um, 2160 by 1440 resolution screen. So that defines your X and Y number of pixels that you can potentially print. But it is not a very large LCD display. I'll put the size and specifications up on the screen now so you can see. Um, so you can't change anything really about the maximum size. One thing to note about resin printing though, as opposed to regular filament printing, is say a model like this took two hours to print for one of them. If I put ten of those on the build plate, it will still only take two hours to print because the exposure time doesn't change. It just puts more, more images on the LCD screen for every layer. Whereas a two-hour print on a filament printer, uh, if I did 10 of them, it most likely would take 10 times as long to print it because it has to draw every single one of them using the melted filament. Um, so if you're doing, and the other thing too is that the details on these, um, I'm looking at this closely and I cannot see with the naked eye any layer lines. Now this is printed at 0.05 millimeters, um, so it's quite fine, but I cannot see layer lines on this. So for little figurines and stuff like that, these resin printers would be absolutely ideal. Um, all I've got to do now is find a UV cura, set these in the sun for a little while, and then get my son or my daughter to paint them. Um, I think these things probably would need a base on them. I don't know whether model makers make separate bases to stand them on, because it probably won't stand up on its own. Uh, that might be something you would add at some point, but uh, I just wanted to test print these, and it came out very, very good. So. Onto Thingiverse to have a look at another bunch of cool models to print, and um, I'll see you in the next video. I will provide links to the Elegoo Mars Pro on Amazon. You can also get to the new Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. Uh, it uses a monochrome display, and a it has a slightly higher resolution. So because it's a monochrome display, it's going to have a little bit more light the UV light coming through and exposing the resin. So it should print quicker. I do not have one of those, so I, I can't test it. Um, there's a few being shown on the internet now and the reviews on YouTube, etc. if you needed to look. But I will provide a link to it anyway on Amazon so that if you wanted to get the upgraded version, then you can. The LCD display that's in here for exposure is a color LCD but they only use it effectively in a monochrome mode. They've got a filter on there, and they're only using the UV light to come through it anyway. So the newer version will have a slightly higher resolution. It's slightly bigger build surface area as well. 
Uh, oh, I actually, I don't know if it's a bigger, a higher resolution. I'd have to check that. I'll put its specs up as well. Um, but it definitely is slightly bigger build area, uh, but it is obviously more expensive as well. The Mars Pro, I think, is a very good buy right now. It seems to be very easy to get going with and simple to set up and use. But if you've got younger people using it, definitely with adult supervision. There's nothing hot that's going to burn yourself, but the chemicals, um, i.e. the resin, isopropyl alcohol, is flammable. The resin is um, mildly toxic, so you need to wear gloves or whatever when you're handling it. Um, and, you know, have proper precautions uh, when using it, you know, and you don't want a child to spill this over something that's going to take forever to clean or be ruined by the resin. Um, obviously, adults can do that too, but, you know, adults don't get told off when they do it. They just kick themselves. That's it for now. So, see you in the next video.